So for a lot of guys out there, they imagine a leather jacket is going to make them look like this. Nice. The reality though, unfortunately, it makes them look like this. Gents, I'm here to tell you, it doesn't have to be this way. In fact, in today's video, I'm going to show you how to style a leather jacket like a grown man. So to get started, you first have to understand there are five fundamental rules to looking good in a leather jacket. First up, quality matters. You want to buy the best you can afford, even if you have to save up for it, because what you don't want to buy is a cheap leather jacket. Now, how to spot quality? Well, first up, you want to pay attention to the material, to the leather. There are different types of leather out there. Some are inferior to other types and you want to be able to spot the difference. I'm going to explain a little bit later in this video, all the different types and what you want to look for. Next up, let's talk about the construction. That's the build quality. That's the number of stitches per inch, the type of material they're using in the stitching, the way that it was put together. This is very important because you may not notice it, you know, a month after wearing it, but 10 years down the line, you don't want your jacket falling apart. Next up, let's talk about the hardware. That's going to be the zippers and the buttons. You want to make sure these are coming from a reputable company. You look at them, they are labeled oftentimes. You can quickly look at something and spot, hey, did they spend good money on this? Because if they spend good money on the hardware, you can bet they probably didn't cut corners in other places. Next up, the aesthetics. We're talking about the overall style and design. You will pay a premium to get a unique jacket or one made by a designer in a unique way. Next up, let's talk about the history. So, you're going to find that some companies have been around for a while. Other ones are just coming out. I like a company with a little bit of history. They don't have to have a hundred years, but what I like to see is that they're going to stand behind the jackets they make. Now, the second foundational rule for styling a leather jacket is to wear the right style for your body type. There's all different styles of jackets out there and you want to wear one that complements Complements your build. If you're five foot nine, 170 pounds, you got lots of options. But if you're six foot four, 300 pounds and carrying a lot of weight around the midsection. If you're five foot two, 120 pounds, there are certain styles that you're going to want to gravitate towards that are just going to work better with your frame. The third rule to styling a leather jacket, fit is emperor. Notice I didn't say king, emperor, because it's even more important than even on a sports jacket or a suit. Why? Because those can be brought in and brought out. Most leather jackets cannot be let out and to bring them in to adjust the leather jacket requires oftentimes a special type of sewing machine, skills, and equipment. Much harder to find somebody that can work on a leather jacket and adjust it. So, when you buy a leather jacket off the rack, you really want to make sure it fits you properly. The fourth rule to styling a leather jacket is to understand how is it going to fit in your wardrobe. Now, leather jackets by their very nature are casual, but you got to make sure you got pieces that are going to work with them because if your wardrobe is too formal, your wardrobe is really ultra casual, it's going to be hard to work it into the rotation and you want to make sure that you're actually able to wear this. So, I will talk a little bit later in the video about outfits you can put together and some really easy go-to pieces that always work with a leather jacket. And last but not least, let's talk about the emotional attachment. This is a jacket, when you put it on, you want it to make you feel like a million bucks. You want this to be a suit of armor that protects you, not only from the elements, but yeah, you just know that every time you put it on, you feel great because you've gotten so many compliments. I mean, the only item in the wardrobe I can think of that's even close to this is maybe a really nice watch. So, you don't want to get this wrong. You don't want to compromise. You don't want to go with that, yeah, that jacket that is a cheap leather that you can afford today. Nah, save up your money. Make sure you get what you really want because it does matter. Now, speaking of getting what you want, gentlemen, all the jackets you've seen in today's video, you can grab over at JL Rocha. Down in the description of today's video, I've got an amazing discount code. Now, back in 2015, they sent me this jacket right here. Beautiful, but it was a limited run and they since don't make it anymore. I was very pleasantly surprised to receive this jacket right here, the Icon. This is a full-on riding jacket. Jacket. Now, as you can probably tell from the photos and the videos, this is a very heavyweight jacket. We're talking 1.4 millimeter thick calfskin. This is going to be great if you want to be able to ride with this jacket, wear it in inclement weather. This is a jacket that is literally built like armor. It can deal with anything you throw at it. Other upgrades they've made on this jacket, they're using Ruby Star zippers. If you're not familiar, this is a definitely a step up from YKK. Right here, as you can see, they've got their logo on the zipper. They've got their logo on the buttons. Small things like this are what I just love about them. It's not in your face, but it is elegant and it's timeless. That contrast stitching, I know, not going to be for everybody. What I love about it is it 
draws attention to the shoulders, to the chest area. I also like on the inside how they used a very durable, tough made cotton. This is a jacket that's made to be worn, made to be thrown around, and even you have to be able to hold this up on a hook. Right here, as you can see, this thing is built into the jacket. It is not going to come off. And these are the type of details you should expect in a high quality jacket. If this jacket isn't your style, go over to their website and look at all the different options you've got over there. Tons of different styles in a variety of different colors using different materials. If you want to go with something more like a field jacket, they've got you covered for over six years. I've been working with this company. I know the founders personally and I love what these guys are doing. Everything is made down in Lyon, Mexico. And if you do your research, you know that Lyon has been a hub for amazing leather work for hundreds of years. So, just stating the obvious, if you're going to get a leather jacket, make sure you get a real leather jacket. Now, you're going to see the genuine leather, you're going to see top grain, you're going to see full grain. What is the difference? So, I'm going to pull up this handy dandy chart right here and as you can see, it really depends on what layer we pull from and there are advantages and disadvantages to all the different types. So, genuine leather, this is not going to be the most durable type of jacket, but it is going to be one of the softest. It is going to be relatively free from blemishes because they're going to do a lot of machining on this and if you want Want a suede jacket, it's going to come from this part of the skin. Now, what's nice about this, again, it's very lightweight. It is going to be, you know, if treated, it can resist some of the elements. But the suede in general, you don't want to wear in a rainstorm or a snowstorm because it can stain. These are also very open to different types of dyes, but these are going to be your lightest. These are leather jackets, but they're usually going to be the lighter, I would say, just more fun style fashion type of jackets. Next up, we've got top grain leather, and you're going to see this pop up a lot, especially in lower end manufacturers because it's relatively inexpensive. They can get a hide and that hide can have blemishes and guess what? They're just going to go and remove that top layer. All of a sudden, the blemishes are gone. Now, what they are losing is one of the most durable, the basically that top layer, which is going to be the most weather resistant. But what they're left with is leather that's very malleable, actually will take to dyes very well and actually have additives put onto it and treat it in a way so it becomes more weather resistant. Next up, let's talk about full grain. And as you can see, this is going to be the top level of the leather. This is going to be the most durable. This is going to be the most water resistant because when you look at the grain, you look at how close and the fibers and the way that they overlap, this is going to be where it's really tight, where it's really just going to be perfect for if you want an, an item, a leather jacket that's going to last 50 years, you want to make sure it's made from a top grain leather. When it comes to the construction, the stitching is going to hold no problem for, for decades. And when it comes overall to its durability, if you're going to take a tumble, if you're going to, you know, have something that you you want to basically be able to deal with thousands and thousands and thousands of wear. Top grain is where it's at. Now, you may be wondering, why doesn't every jacket use top grain? Well, it comes down to blemishes and what part of the hide they're able to get and actually use. So, there's first grade, there's second grade, there's third grade, and there's fourth grade leathers. And as you can imagine, as you go farther down, the leather is less desirable. It's going to be more porous. It's going to have more cuts and scrapes and the unevenness, the thickness is not going to be is good. So, that first grade, this is usually reserved for higher end shoes, leather works. Basically, when you want an unblemished, perfect piece of leather that's going to have all the properties that an artisan expects of leather, first grade is really where it's at. Now, second grade, you can get some great options here and you'll find a lot of the higher end jackets are made just simply because you need a bigger cut. But second grade, first grade right here, this is really what should be used in the higher end jackets. Occasionally, you will see lower end jackets going in and using the third grade. It's not the best material, but again, it's just going to be more readily available. So, they will use it. And sometimes, they'll just use it maybe over on the sleeve. Maybe they'll use it on random parts here or there, especially if a jacket is put together piecemeal. And it goes without saying in general, you want to avoid fourth grade leather. This is again what they're going to use in bonded leathers when they're building out soles in shoes. It's leather, but it doesn't have the desirable properties that we want to see in leather. And really quick, a word of warning. Why you want to avoid cheap jackets? Because it's the little things like the dyes that they use. A lot of times companies cut corners and they'll use a dye that, yeah, looks great initially. You got this blue jacket, leather jacket, and then you get caught in a rainstorm. And guess what? When you use a cheaper company, they use a dye that when water hits it, it goes right through. And so that white shirt, every, you know, your skin literally is dyed blue and it takes weeks to get that, you know, that stuff out. Point being is be careful 
of cheap jackets because it is something that they had to cut corners someplace to be able to deliver this and you want to make sure that this is a company that's reputable. Now, I alluded to the different styles for the different body types, but let's go over this. So, what I've been wearing here and I know a lot of JL Roach's collection, we've got racer styles. Right here, we've got a cafe racer that the front area has this flap where the leather goes over it, zips up. This is a great practical riding jacket. Whenever I rode motorcycles, this would definitely be one of the jackets I would go for. It's got the appropriate thickness of the leather, exactly what I'm looking for in armor whenever I'm going to be on my bike. But if you don't have the body type for it, this is not going to be the best style. So, if you have a large belly, if you're six foot seven, 350 pounds and you're carrying a lot of weight around the midsection, understand it's going to be harder to find a jacket like this that would ever work for you because of the inherent drop. And this has to come with the silhouette of a style of jacket like this. In fact, most motorcycle style jackets are designed for a guy whose chest is at least as large as his stomach. So, that means you have a zero drop. Now, if you've got a bit of a drop, let's say you've got about a 44 inch chest and you've got a 40 inch waist. So, you got a little bit of weight, you know, weight around the midsection, not too much, but you definitely you know, got maybe a dad bod going on. You could pull off a motor jacket. And what I love about this is when you put this thing on, it's just going to slim up your silhouette. Overall, it's just going to give you a more masculine look. Whether you go for a double rider with cafe racer, whatever style you want to grab here, all of a sudden you're going to have something that's going to make you look good. Now, let's talk about fit. And remember I said fit is emperor. Guys, I can't stress how important this is to make sure that you wear a jacket that fits you properly. Now, everyone's got their personal preference. I know some of you guys like your jackets to fit super tight. Other of you, yeah, you like them to fit a little bit looser. Find what works for you, but in general, when you put the jacket on, you should have full freedom of movement of the arms. For me, this is about having a high armhole. Quality jackets in general will have higher armholes. They're going to be made to fit less people. Lower armholes, believe it or not, they don't give you the same freedom of movement. I also, they have to fit you in the shoulders. Now, you can give or take, you know, an inch here, but if it's two inches, if those shoulder points are going down onto your arms, guys, do not keep that jacket. It's just never going to fit properly and cannot be adjusted. Next up, the sleeve length. I don't like it if a jacket is too long in the sleeves. I do like it and I get it. If you ride motorcycles, if you have your arms up like this, then of course, yeah, you want to go a little bit longer, but it really comes down to the function of the jacket. How are you going to use it? Now, again, depending on the style, you know, if it's a moto racer made in a more sporty type of build, then usually the chest area is going to have more room than the stomach area. There's going to be a bit of a drop and this is going to create a masculine silhouette. But if it's a bomber jacket, a flight jacket, a fatigue utility jacket, then these type of jackets right here are usually going to be a little bit more straight in their drop, although some will have a little bit come closer in the midsection. But oftentimes, like the utility jacket, they're going to have straps that go around that allow you to tighten this if you so choose. Now, when it comes to getting the right fit, the best thing you can do is know your own measurements. Know what your chest measurement is, know what your stomach measurement is, know what your shoulder measurements are, and your full sleeve. Then go check on the website of the company you're looking to buy the jacket from. You want to make sure that, hey, based off of this, and you can probably actually measure your favorite sports jacket. You don't have one suit jacket, maybe a shirt. Find something that can give you an approximation. Send the company. You should probably have good, you'll make sure they have good customer service. Let them know what your measurements are, but you want to make sure you get as close to perfect as possible. And if need be, simply return it. Think about how you want to wear the jacket and that's the fit you want to get. I know for me, I like to have my jackets loose enough that I could fit a heavy sweater on underneath, kind of like an insulating layer. But if it's something, I know some of you guys want things really tight because you're going to stretch that jacket out, then make sure you get that. So, how to style a leather jacket, especially as a grown man? What should you wear with it? For me, one of the most important things is your choice of footwear. Boots, naturally speak, to a casual leather jacket, but it depends on the style and the type of the jacket. If you're going to go with a delicate made suede jacket that just simply drapes on very lightweight, you can wear a dress shoe and that'll look fine. But if you're going to wear a heavier jacket like this, something that's made to be worn with a motorcycle, it seems, then you want to have boots. You want to have basically something on your feet that would protect your feet and is built in the same style. In a nutshell, heavier weight jacket, go with heavier weight shoes. A more delicate jacket, go with more delicate shoes. You've got that option there. Now, if you start to mix things up, I would maybe, yeah, with a delicate jacket, you could wear heavier weight boots. But in general, I like to again keep them even. 
And when it comes to matching, no, you do not have to match leathers. Your boots do not have to match your jacket. They don't have to match your shoes. They can be approximately close, but you know, hey, if you're wearing a red jacket, do you need to wear red shoes? Of course not. You could wear a black, you could wear a dark brown, you could wear ox blood, which is kind of a red. But uh, even with a brown jacket like this right here, I could wear black boots and I would be perfectly fine. Now, what about your choice of trousers? What about your choice of shirt? Guys, I don't want to overcomplicate this, but I will say that remember that a leather jacket by its very nature is going to be casual. Now, there's different levels of casualness. This one, because of the heavy weight, because of the overall build and the style with the contrast stitching, this is going to be a more casual type of leather jacket. If I was going maybe with a suede in a really nice color, dark, clean, conservative, you could dress it up a bit. And I do think maybe wearing a black leather jacket, even in the style without the contrast stitching, would be a step up in formality, but it's good. It would still be casual. Point being is if you've got an outfit that is relatively a dressed up outfit, you're wearing a necktie, you have a nice dress shirt on, you have dress slacks with dress shoes, wearing a jacket like this is probably not going to work. You could do it if you've got the confidence going after, you know, after works drinks with your buddies. Sure, go for it. But I would think that, yeah, maybe the suede in a really dark color actually would look better with that combination. So again, it depends on the type of jacket. This jacket right here, because of the casual nature, this is going to be something great with a casual button down like this with dark denim, which I'm actually wearing this combination right here. Or, you know, I could bring in maybe some chinos, go with some dark colored chinos, a variety of different styles right there. Would I bring in gray flannels with the style? No, it's going to be too dressy. Now, when it comes to shirts, t-shirts, I think especially in a solid color with a v-neck right in there, heavier weight, it's going to look great. You can bring in a Henley, short sleeve, long sleeve, doesn't really matter. Maybe even a polo would actually work fine. But again, once you start to bring in dress shirts, and again, a dress shirt is not a casual button down, this casual button down in a dark color with a softer cotton. Dress shirts in and of themselves, usually white or light blue, made to be buttoned up here at the top, worn with a necktie. I think that that's about as far as you ever want to go really with trying to match that with a, uh, a leather jacket. All right, gentlemen, so what video to watch next? How about how to dress like a man? Seriously, you tired of dressing like a boy? Guys, I got you covered in this video right here where I explain in no uncertain terms exactly how to dress like a man. Go check it out, guys. It's a good video.